everyone and welcome to Stay in the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. As you can see, we're doing a blind tasting, not double blind, single blind. I know they're all Bordeaux. We're just going to go through them and see what we think. I um, <clears throat> want to thank everybody who's been watching. I'm starting to gain a little traction. I really appreciate that. Um, some people have been coming in the store and telling me they like the videos. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and hopefully you're learning something about wine as we go through these episodes. We're tasting Bordeaux and Bordeaux is a very interesting area in the world. By the way, don't tell me you're watching them unless, unless you really are. <laughs> um, hopefully I do a, d a double blind tasting here pretty soon. The last one I did, I just botched it. Uh, double blinds are hard because you don't know what you're getting into at all. You're just going straight up. You know, you either know they're white or red, that's it. Uh, so they're, they're tough. But I need to do another one. I think you guys appreciate that. I am going to move the bottles this time because I think they're a little out of the screen. So we're going to taste three Bordeaux, but again, once again, without backtracking, Bordeaux is a very interesting area. Um, uh, Grand Cru Class A Bordeaux, 1855 classification. Uh, France decided to make certain chateaus the best of the best. And 1855, only Mouton Rothschilds uh, gained access to that sacred ground um, after World War I. Um, and so they were included in the first growth uh, chateaus. So it's a very uh, regulated area of the world. Uh, the river Gironde runs through it, and on the west side of the river, as it goes through this uh, Appalachian, Bordeaux, the e wet west side of the river is called the Left Bank, predominantly cab-based wines, and the east side of the river is referred to as the Right Bank, and they're predominantly Merlot-based wines. Some, some chateaux uh, diverge from that a little bit, and then down below in the Graves is one of the only, the only chateau outside of the Left Bank that is a first growth, Grand Cru Class A, and that is uh, Hobrion. So there you go, a little lesson in Bordeaux. So you hear left bank, right bank, think left bank Cab, right bank Merlot, I mean Petrus, which is on the right bank, not Grand Cru Class A, not first growth, uh, is uh, Petrus, which is you know considered one of the best in the world, is predominantly Merlot. So for all of you out there that are Merlot haters because of that stupid, well, I like the movie Sideways, but it's stupid that they were able to have such an influence. Really? Because an actor said no Merlot? People quit drinking Merlot? And then at the very end of the movie, unbeknownst, he drank a Cheval Blanc, which is right bank, predominantly Merlot. He, that's the bottle he was saving. I'm pretty sure it was Cheval Blanc. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, great movie, but it wasn't intended to give advice about wine. It was actually, that was, there was a lot of irony in that. Okay, enough said. So, we're, we're going to what called Bordeaux Superior. They don't have a ranking. They're not first, second, third, fourth, fifth growth. They're at the bottom of the, of the ladder. But the cool thing about these is they're inexpensive, and a lot of them are very good. And, they, and especially if you get them from a really good vintage, you end up getting really good wines and really good values. All of these are under $30. I think they're all under $20. Not positive. So let's get started right off the bat. Number one, number one. Here we go. By the way, if you watched my last video, you're probably going, man, that guy. I shot it before the Seahawks came and they beat the 49ers. They that kicked the butts. But I said they needed to win that game if they were going to progress on to the uh, playoffs, and they did. They did win it. So they, Dallas is next. But you uh, see, I shot it early. I couldn't get it loaded up. I couldn't, you know, I'm a one man show here. I don't have a wine store with a whole bunch of employees that can help me. I'm just kind of going on my own. My wife did bag up the wines. Thank you very much for doing that, Bridget. Uh, I really appreciate it. What's inspired me to do Bordeaux, by the way, Blind Bordeaux, is I'm going to a little group tasting tonight. We're doing all Bordeaux. We're going to do them blind. We're going to judge them, see how it turns out. It's going to be kind of fun. So, let's see what we get on the nose. Dust, 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 dust and wood. 
Get a little bit of cherry, like more red cherry than dark cherry. Really dusty. Quite crazy. A little bit of uh, vanilla coming through, which is interesting. Um, some red flowers. Let's see what we get on pellet. Bone dry. Bone dry. And very uh, minerally, like I just munched on a bunch of rocks. But the cherry fruit currants come through. Definitely a little bit of mocha going on in the mid in the mid palate and into the finish. This baby is dry. Good balance though, that's good acid. There's fruit there, there's minerality. Um, this is one of the this is a style of wine though that I would not recommend to somebody who's wanting to break into Bordeaux because this is really what it's all about in many ways. Um, um, this I wouldn't say it's youthful because this is I know this is ready to drink. This is the style that they were shooting for. I'm pretty sure that it might be able to lay down a couple more years. Um, but there's some fruit. So if you're a new world wine drinker and you want to try some old world wine, this would not be the one for you to go to. Now, for you who like Bordeaux, I think you would enjoy this wine. All right. Did I grab my pen? Okay, it is. I'm going to grade it right now. I'm not going to guess the price on this because uh, I know they're all fairly inexpensive. All right, there goes number one. Let's go to number two. Number two. Put a little rinse. Now, I would recommend decanting even these uh, inexpensive drip action. Bordeaux, they just, it, it helps. They're, they're old world. They could use a little breathing action. And, you know, as I've said many, many times, I try to taste the way most people do. Most of you do not decant. I appreciate that. It's okay. It's not a requirement for enjoying wine. I'm just saying that you might get a little bit more out of the wine if you decant them, even these inexpensive Bordeaux. Let's see what we get on the nose. So this is more classic Bordeaux nose, kind of a little bit of a stink, not a lot. A little bit of leather coming through. Um, excuse me just a minute, i got to let the Chewini in radar before he takes off, so I'll be right back. Come on, radar. Come on, radar. Come on, you out there? All right. One thing about shooting them at your house, and you have a Chewini and a Chihuahua, you have to take care of them. Right, Radar, yeah. He's just a puppy, too. I don't want him to take off. All right. So, a lot of rose petal, like, like wilted rose petal, you know, like they're just starting to, they're not rotten yet. A lot of tobacco and, uh, yeah, more currants on this one than the other one. I just have a feeling from smelling this, it's going to be a little bit more fruit, maybe a style that more people will like if you're breaking into Bordeaux. If you already like Bordeaux, you're going to love number one, if, especially if you like old world style. I know my good friend Dick, he'll love that wine a lot. That's his style. Shout out to my buddy Dick. Sorry you're going to have to miss my, on my birthday, or around my birthday, not on my birthday necessarily. I always get a group of guys together and we bust out you know, five, six, seven of my wines from my cellar. It's always fun, kind of a celebration, you know. I'm getting older, but I still love to share wine. A little bit of cedar coming through, too, so um, let's see what we get on the palate. It's my Chewini's toy squeaking in the background, just if you need to know. Hey, 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 hey! Stop that!
a lot silkier, a lot smoother, a lot more classic uh, Bordeaux style. Um, sorry, my dog is distracting me. <laughs> By the way, um, um, I really appreciate some of the advice I've gotten before I get back to this number two. Some of the advice I've gotten about my videos, I know I haven't followed all of it, I'm, I apologize. Um, I've watched some other programs on TV uh, where stuff's going on in the back, people are walking around doing stuff. So I'm not so worried about the stuff behind me. I mean, I, I hope it's not distracting, but man, compared to some of these other shows, I have nothing going on behind me. And the squeaking toy, you know. Good acidity, which of course makes it great for food, but good fruit too, solid, good currants, a little bit of cherries, you get a little cranberry on the back side of this, red flowers all day, I mean, a lot of violets and rose, rose petals coming through, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of leather, all that stuff you think of old world wines, a little minerality, now this is not as dry as the first one, um, I would encourage, in fact, I don't know which one this is, but this is definitely one of those go-to wines uh, if I'm looking for, uh, in fact, right now, the, my pick of the month is uh, Chateau de Masse, uh, 2009 Bordeaux, classic vintage, 9 and 10 were really good over in Bordeaux. By the way, that's a good to pay attention. Just Google it. Was this vintage great in Bordeaux? They'll tell you. Um, anyway, that has a lot of fruit on it. Still has that kind of those Bordeaux qualities, but a little more fruit. And those are the things that I kind of recommend uh, to people to break into old world wines. I like the finish. It's nice and bone dry, but up front, you get a little more currants, a little chocolate tones coming through, which is curious. Good balance on this wine. Why did I throw that pen back in the drawer? So, that's grade number two. By the way, when you're judging or judging or grading or scoring wines, whatever method you use, stars, glasses, points, I use grades, your approach to the wine has to be different when you're tasting old world wines. What are you looking for in a Bordeaux when you drink it? You're not looking for a lot of fruit. You're looking for a balance of fruit, mineral, and acids. Does it have good balance? Doesn't matter if it's bone dry. That certainly is not... A factor. So those are things you consider when you're drinking Bordeaux versus drinking a Napa Cab. Your approach to those are going to be different. Hopefully you don't say, well I want that Napa Cab to be old world. It's not going to be and if you use that criteria for judging that wine then you're off base. Your judging of a wine has to be based on uh, uh, country of origin, appellations, all of that. What are you expecting to get out of that wine? What should that wine be giving you. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people uh, use that term parkerized wines. That's where Robert Parker supposedly, now I have not asked him personally, supposedly likes big, unctuous, fruit forward wines. And a lot of people have accused him of uh, changing the wine world in that sense where even people in the old world are trying to make big fruit forward wines. Anyway, hopefully that's not the case. If that has been the case, uh, I have noticed it in some areas, in particular the Rhone Valley. Uh, sometimes I haven't had a chance to taste any first growth or second growth wines. Well, I have, maybe I have had a second growth wine. Anyway, they, some people have accused them of going to the fruit forward side. Well, I mean, depending on, you know, how it's built and the structure and all that, you know, that you have to take that into consideration too. Get off that soapbox, right? Oh, totally. What I love about Bordeaux, you see, first of all, all the bottles are the same size. Love that. So you're doing a blind tasting. Sometimes it's hard, especially if you have some idea of what might be in there. And bottles are like that. You kind of, well, that might be the one word. Anyway, um, 
What I like about Bordeaux is that all three, the noses are completely different. They have some similarities, but they're entirely different. I love that. So this has a meatier nose, a little bit of tar action going on. Yeah, it smells like, uh, you know how they oil rock the roads? You know, they, they put that oil on the, I hate that. But anyway, they call that black topping, I think. Anyway, it has that kind of uh, nose to it. Like oil rot, you know, the oil they put on the, the pavement. If you're from the city, you might not relate to that because you're not, you know, I live in the country, sort of small town, we do that, you know, they throw the rocks and the oil on there. But I think a lot of you have smelled that. Very meaty, a little bit of that tarry action going on, a little bit of that tobacco for sure, and, and a little bit of currants underlying it. Pretty cool. Let's, oh, number three. That's what we're doing, the third one. Let's see what we, okay, so we got the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Bone dry again, but this has a nice expansive mid palate. I get a lot, you know, there's a lot of like um, currant and dark cherry fruit coming through on the mid palate. Finishes very minerally, very like crushed rock and acidity is there. Has an interesting like barbecue spice thing going on right at the back of the mid palate into the finish. Kind of a cool wine, good balance, good structure. Um, fairly smooth across the palate. Again, very dry, which you would expect out of a Bordeaux. I think the middle one might be the best for the average consumer that is just looking to try Bordeaux. I think this last one is more classic Bordeaux. Uh, a little better built than the first one, in my opinion. Finishes with that a little bit of that, that old world kind of thing going on, but good, uh, like violets all day. Violets all day. Some tobacco. I like that one. I like that one a lot. That one actually might age another five years solidly, I would say. Okay, there we go. Let's line them up. See what they are. I actually forgot. Interesting. In last place with a C plus, 2011, not a great vintage, Lorraine Bordeaux. Just straight up Bordeaux. No particular area of Bordeaux, so that means, you know, it can come from any, uh, they can probably source it from anywhere in Bordeaux. It actually gives you the composition on the back, 90% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc. There you go, $17. Like I said, I would not use this wine in any way, shape, or form as a way to get people broken into Bordeaux. But, uh, you know, it has classic elements. There we go. Sometimes my, I have trouble with the uh, focus on this for some reason. Anyway, second place with a B grade. 2009, okay, better vintage. 2009 Chateau Sorbet, homemade dock, big area. Homemade docks like the Columbia Valley of Washington State. Um, so that's its appellation. Uh, there you go. And this rolls in at thirteen dollars. Crazy. This might be the value of the day. This is one I said that might most people that are um, haven't tried Bordeaux yet. This might be a good good place to go. There you go. With a B plus in first place. 
Chateau de Agasac, 2009, again, homemade oak. This is Cru Bourgeois. This rolls in at $25. Interesting. I, always, I don't always like it when the most expensive one comes in first, but this one definitely had classic Bordeaux characteristics, well-built, good wine. Number two, if you're looking for a good, um, just... Bordeaux to try first time, the Chateau Sorbet would be the way to go. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. You keep watching, and I'll keep trying to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Blue.